Well, good morning, loungers. Um, it's Bruce, who you may know as Audio HTIT. Um, well, I guess I can't reverse the camera, uh, but I'll just say hi. <clears throat> um, I am going to show, because it was requested, hopefully, a video of how to install the HDMI V3 board in the XMC1. Um, we're going to start off, and I've kind of got it set here on the kitchen table. Um, it's powered on. It's, we're going to do this headless for the first part, um, which means there's no monitor attached, but we've got a nice display. I've got some tools handy. I have read the instructions, but I have them handy here as well because I'm going to follow along. Um, so we're going to start by doing the firmware upgrade. And here's all the things that come with it. You get this anti-static wristband, a flash drive, and the uh, new uh, labels for the back, uh, back panel. Um, the card is still in the package. I'm going to grab um, the uh, thumb drive, but before that, they say, make sure that you are in low power standby mode. I know I am, but just for everyone's um, interest, I'm going to take you in there. Uh, so we go into setup, advanced, and wait, advanced. And then you see here, standby lowest power. And that's the mode you want to be in when you do the firmware upgrade. It says insert the USB thumb drive, which I'm going to use the front panel here. And we put that on there. We press the menu button. We press up and down buttons to select setup. And I'm already at setup because I was just there. Um, press the right button to enter the setup advanced, which I'm right there. Um, and use the up, um, up down arrows to uh, do the firmware upgrade. Oh, um, this is where you'd back up settings as well. I've already done that. And we will go to firmware update. <clears throat> Select firmware update, press the right button to enter the confirmation screen. Are you sure? So we push the up arrow to check the box and then left to confirm. And as it says, again, it's doing the upgrades. One thing you've, you've committed to at this point is that you are going to install the card. Once you've installed the, the 5.0 firmware, you can't run the old video card anymore. We know that's going on. I can show you that it's a beautiful day outside. Um, like I say, we're here at the kitchen table and um, it's, it's a nice sunny day, although it's gonna be very warm. So I'm glad to have an indoor project because, uh, well, it's gonna be close to 100 today here in the California gold country, which is um, basically the foothills east of Sacramento. Because, okay, it just finished and shut off. Um, so, we are going to start on the hardware procedure next, and we'll come back. Step one of the hardware update is to turn off the rocker panel on the rear switch. We've just finished doing the firmware update, so we turn off the rocker panel, and we disconnect the power cable. Um, and now we're going to remove the eight screws. Um, I kind of loosened them just to get a feel for it because I didn't want to take too much time if they, um, you know, were snug. There's uh, three screws on each side. Oh, no. There's several screws, part of the HDMI board down lower. You don't want to take those out, just the two at the very top. Uh, take the top off. Okay. Um, I'm going to tell you that I actually had quite a bit of trouble getting the top off and it's because of a small tab that's right up here in the front and it slides into a groove in the front panel 
And um, no matter what I did, what angle I pulled at, I tried all different kinds of things that wouldn't come out. I actually Googled it and I found somebody in the lounge had the problem and somebody over at AVS had the problem. And they just said that eventually you'll find the right angle and it'll come out. And indeed, after quite some time, it just like magically released and so is put on the anti-static wrist uh, wrist strap. I tell you to clip it on the back panel here. So we start by removing the J5 connector, which is right here. Okay, there's J5 removed. Then unplug the ribbon cables J19 and J13 by pulling sideways. Um, that would be these two guys. And by sideways, well, to me that means towards the front, but um, I always find a rocking motion sort of helps Get these guys loose. And there we go on that guy. Remove the two screws securing the HDMI video card to the standoffs underneath it towards the center. Um, we have screws here and here. So we are going to loosen them. They actually say remove them. There's the first one. And the second one. And then remove the 10 screws we talked about earlier along the back. So I'm going to get a bigger screwdriver, but it's still in number one. And remove those. And it says remove the original HDMI board and set it aside. Use a pair of pliers or a nut driver to slightly loosen the two brass standoffs that support the HDMI board. There we go. And it says loosen them, not remove them. No more than one full turn, just to allow enough to allow them to move freely. And we have the more traditional little static bag inside, but here is the new board. Carefully position the new HDMI 2OB video upgrade board in your XMC1. And one would assume that means on the standoffs the way the other one was. So you're gonna line up the HDMI inputs and you know, I actually thought about a way to do this last night that I think might help, and I'm gonna... Okay, so they don't say to do this. I'm just gonna give it a try as a way to help align the board. I'm you know, gonna just discharge this cable, but I'm gonna plug in the two ends, which should help keep the board in place and sort of lined up while I'm working. Loosely insert the 10 screws in the HDMI board. So I can see in the back right here where these 10 screws go that the holes in the mounting bracket here line up. So my little cable trick here sort of helps and it's holding it in place. So I don't know, maybe that's a good idea. Lonnie or um, Keith might pop in and say, oh, don't do that. Anyway, I did it, so we'll see. Um, so I'm going to loosely install uh, this, the eight screws or ten screws. So do not tighten these screws yet in big bold letters. So I've got all ten screws in. Loosely replace the two screws towards the center board that secure it to the brass standoffs. Um, a lot of people mentioned they had trouble with this part. We'll see. Because I can see they don't really want to line up. Okay. Got that one in. This one may be more difficult. 
I would say make sure there's a fair amount of play. Okay, so I got that one in. And the brass standoffs under the board will tighten as you tighten the screws. I'm going to start with this one that gave us the most trouble. Okay, that's nice and snug. As is that one. Let's do the ones on the back. All the screws are tight. Um, these guys are tight. Carefully reconnect the four cables that you disconnected. Uh, we have this little guy that it's got a little key on it. So it goes in like this. And finally this guy. Okay, that should be all our connections. They feel snug. They felt good when they went in. Unclip your anti-static wrist strap from the back inside of the XMC, remove the bracelet and set it aside. Okay, so here's the little tab that gave me all the grief. I'm not sure why, but boy. So you've got to find the angle and there it is. It's somewhere in here, I don't know, 30 degrees, um, where it pops back into place. Now we're going to replace the eight screws. So there it is, buttoned back up. Now we have to put on the new label. The original label is silk screened on, so this is what it looks like. The uh, screws pretty much line you up. So I haven't taken off the backing yet, so I just kind of did a dry fit there. All right, so we're going to peel off the backing. Okay, again, you want to target the screws. They're going to help you line it up. I happen to have a little plastic thing here. That's actually for cleaning um, pizza stones, but it's a good burnishing tool. Reconnect the power cable to your XMC, reconnect all of your HMS, HDMI vices, devices, and power it on. I've hooked up a minimal amount of cabling, cabling, a few inputs, and the TV output. I don't even have the amp hooked up yet, the uh, XPA7 that's right down here. But the rear um, panel switches off. I'm going to reach around and turn that on. And we got some flashing light and some... There we go, it's gone into standby. And so here we go. So now we have a picture. That's coming through the cable box off HDMI 1 and we can see there on the display, it's a hopper and we're getting stereo and so let's try switching to Apple TV. That, and hey, that worked. So we now have Apple TV up on the screen. Yeah, I've got uh, the Oppo hooked up too, so let's try that. Oh, and I have to rename this one because it's not a VRP anymore, it's a UDP, because I now have an Oppo 203. Well, it's reporting 444 SDR, so we're getting some information from the Oppo successfully. So far, so good. Everything's working, though I haven't done any sound yet. So that's it. Um, I would call it successful for the time being, and you saw how it was done. I'm gonna try and edit this down to make it as short as possible, but that's probably all for now on the upgrade of the uh, XMC1 HDMI V3 board from Bruce Audio HTIT. So take it easy, loungers. Talk to you soon.